us have a word of prayer. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you most of all for your darling son, your only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you also, Father, for the, the person, the power, and the presence of the Holy Spirit who is with us. As we come tonight, Lord, we pray that you would use this time uh, together in your word to edify hmm. us, build us up in our most holy faith, help us that we might become better in every area of life and living. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. 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 All right. Good evening to everyone. And we want to welcome everyone, family and friends, to the Christ Baptist Church Sunday evening interactive Bible study, Fuel for Courage. And we thank God for each and every one of you who turned aside from the NCAAs, <laughs> both men and women. Hmm. Um, since Villanova already got knocked out, um, yeah, hey, it's just a good thing to watch. But anyhow, praise God for all of you. Um, we're not going to do a a deep dive uh, study because this platform is for interactive um, study. Um, and that is, we, it, it, it's our aim and our goal that everyone would participate, everyone would share their, their thoughts, their experiences, um, that we might grow, that we might build each other up, again, in our most holy faith. <clears throat> um, and I think you'll be surprised if it's, this is, again, it's not a, it's not a deep dive thing where you got to know Hebrew and, and Greek, anything like that. Um, but all of us have life experiences, past or present, that um, it's worth looking at, comparing to, and um, evaluating. Um, so our topic tonight is a very simple topic, and that is, um, the word is called, um, you just had a, it's encouragement. That's all it is, it's, it's encouragement. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen. So we can. So we can dive on in. So my question I want to start out with is what exactly is encouragement? And since this is, again, since this is interactive and we have, <clears throat> we have at least 17 participants, we may just come up with 17 different responses. So that's, that's my start off question, I guess, an icebreaker. <laughs> um, what is encouragement? Somebody. I would say, I would say inspiration. Okay. Thank you. Spiritual boost. Spiritual boost. To lift someone up. Thank you. Thank you. Good edifying. Yes, ma'am. That yes, that, that is a form. Yes. Motivate Make someone feel better. Yes. Yes. I would say a word or action that gets you to move in the right direction. That is beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? I would, I would say uh, moving someone past the point of giving up. 
Wow. That's, that's awesome. <clears throat> See, I told y'all. Um, so anybody else? Encourage me. Well, I believe Shining I believe, the light on dark situations. Okay. Larry? I believe, I believe C-O-U-R means heart in Latin. So I believe it means to give heart or to uh, encourage one's heart or, or, or to, I can't use the definition of the word, but to give heart to, to boost one's heart, you know, in terms of like spirit. That's awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We'll move on. Um, <clears throat> another question: What 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 is significant about encouragement? What what is significant about encouragement? I, I would say this: It's necessary. For this journey, you know, we all need encouragement on this journey. You know, we, yeah, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else? Significance of encouragement gives hope to move forward. I'm sorry. Cassandra, can you repeat that? Gives hope to move forward. Okay. It is. Hope to move forward. I add to Cassandra's, it gives you strength to push past your fear. It puts courage on the inside of you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. All right. <clears throat> um, let's look at from the, the Old Testament concept of encourage or encouragement. And it's a little different because in the Hebrew, um, the, the PL of, of Hazak, and Hazak is, is, the, is the root word in the Old Testament used to express um, the concept of encouragement. And if you, if you look at um, what's been listed here and what's highlighted here, um, it's basically affirming and reinforcing what some of you have already said. And I like that. Um, the, the, the Old Testament uses a PL verb form of, of hizak, uh, meaning to strengthen, um, for expressing its concepts of encouragement. Um, an example is uh, Deuteronomy 138, 328, 2 Chronicles 11.25, and, and we'll get there, um, and fellow workers by, by each other. I think that was Isaiah 41.7. Um, and Minister Davis, I think it was you that said the strengthening takes place within a person and thus has to do with the attitudes which one faces. Um, and then Ezekiel 13.22, um, the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, it literally means strengthening of the hands. Um, and it refers to the inner strengthening that enables one to work. Um, and I think it was Glenda who mentioned strength that strengthening that enables us to to do. So um, now, so and I threw something in here. Actually, I included something in here. It says, it says uh, above the top the Hebrew Hebrew PL of Hazard. Um, PL is basically a super strong verbiage or verbal language to um, 
enforce the emphasis on the word. Okay. So again, we're not doing a deep dive. Um, can I get can I get three readers, please? I'll read. Thank you. The first one. Yes, please. But I'll read Joshua. The second one. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Joe, I'll begin reading. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Amen. Thank you. Next. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall, I see it's covered up, I can't see. Oh, okay. Let's see. Can you see it now? He shall no. cause, he, cause them, to, cause inherit them the to inherit the land which thou shalt see. Thank you. And I, I was uh, I was blown away at Isaiah 40, 41, 7. Um, it really, it was encouraging. Can someone read Isaiah 41 and 7, please? I'll read it. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, it is ready for the soldering, for the soldering, and he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Thank you. Um, I'm going to, we're going to go back to full screen and, and full galley so we can chop this up a little bit. Um, so the question that I had posed earlier was what is the significance of um, encouragement? So based on those three scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures that we read, um, pay no attention to that furry four-footed friend in the background. Um, what is the what what is the significance of encouragement um, based on what we have read from those three Old Testament scriptures dealing with encouragement? Uh, what is the significance relative to what uh, to well to encouragement? Uh, all those, all those, those three scriptures contain the word encouragement. So, as our friend Reverend Winston would say, context is king. Um, so, in, in in the Old Testament um, setting, having to do with Joshua, and then in Ezekiel forty-one seven, it says. First of all, it was commanded by the Lord to encourage Joshua. There's two scriptures. Then, and um, there was a there was a demonstration of encouragement that was shown or that is shown in Isaiah 41 and 7. So, how important is that? How important is encouragement? Who are the people? Okay, let me do this. Who are the people? that were the object or the target of encouragement? Joshua. The leaders. Thank you. They were, they were leaders and or key, and I'll use the word ministry workers. Okay. So, is there anything we can glean from from those from those three scriptures that we could add to our arsenal of living, our our orthopraxy, um, to enhance, to build up? Do we know anybody in key 
ministry position? Do we know anybody in key leadership position? And then what would you say our responsibility as a believer in looking at this? What, what's, what's, what do we do? What's the, what's the, what's the call to action? I, I would say that our response, oop, I'm on. Un, uh, there you she go. was open, then she muted herself. <laughs> okay. I, I, from those two scriptures, Joshua, as w when he took over where Moses left off, he needed encouragement because he was, he was alone. Be before that, he was following Moses. He was Moses' assistant. Now he's taken over. So therefore, we as those who are overseers of us, we need to encourage them. It is our responsibility to me to pour into them that they might move forward in confidence and give us what is necessary, what God has given them. To just sit under someone and never say an encouraging word or never come to their assistance, to me, I would be, I, I would soon say, oh, this is not for me. But those that we know that are in leadership, our ministers, our even our psalmists, you know, the people that sing, uh, uh, our, our pastors, our deacons, those people um, are the people that the, I'll say the sheep have an ear for because they are in essence our leaders and we should encourage them in their, in their task, in their uh, vocation to do well because if no one ever ever tells you how not how good you are how perfect you are but to just say an encouraging word it causes us to want to do more for each other amen anyone else thank you sister Mamie. Mm -hmm. encouragement gives uh, gives one another the will. We might be down and need a, a positive word, and someone comes along and encourages us and make you know help us to believe in our hearts that we can do the job that needs to be done. Um, so the, in, in essence, they're pushing me forward for a picture that I cannot see, but that they're helping me to see. Amen. Amen. All right. Anyone, anyone else? What, what about um, what about Isaiah 41 and 7? Somebody. If you need me to put it back up, uh, I can put it back up. And we're simply talking about encouragement. Pastor Bowen, it looks uh, Bowen. It looks as if there it takes everyone, not more than one person. It takes it takes all of us. The one mm -hmm. that the incur the one that melted the gold, the one that smoothed it, and the hammer that beats it into shape. It's saying it takes all, and the soldering. It takes more than one person. It takes all of us collectively to walk this faith walk so that mm -hmm. we will be and do and get what God intends for us to get. Amen. It, any, thank you, Sister Mamie. Anybody else want to add to that? Or No? Okay. Um, Actually, it's forty-one six. I think is is the point that I that I I think jumps out there. They helped everyone, his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, "Be of good courage." Yeah, it actually starts there. Mm -hmm. The ver yeah, and so <clears throat> if you look at verse seven, matter of fact, read those again together, D. <clears throat> let me let me cover my mouth. Uh, they helped everyone, his neighbor, and everyone 
said to his brother, be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil saying, it is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Amen. Thank you. So even in, even in team efforts, when you're, when, when you're working on a specific project in a specific ministry, um, it is significant, it is beneficial, it is enriching, it is edifying um, that everybody on the team encourages each other in order for God to get the glory, God to get the best. And it's a, like I said, that scripture, that scripture kind of stuck out at me. Um, let's, let's take this, um, let's take this out of church, out of a church concept, so to speak. What about a, in a family, in a family setting? How how good are we, or how consistent are we regarding encouraging those in our own family? Ain't no mess like church mess and family mess. <laughs> so sometimes I think in families, just like in churches, we're not very good at it. Great point. Anyone else? I think in the family, uh, <clears throat> you know, like with our children and nieces and nephews and family far and near, we got to be persistent, you know, uh, sort of like saying the same thing over every opportunity we, we may get to encourage them or, or to share the love of Christ with the family. It's true. Um how often do or has our children come to church and hurt us, encourage somebody, either verbally or non-verbally, but when you go back home, there's like little or no encouragement towards them. You know, there's been some, um, and this is not a knock against pastors because you know I've been a pastor. Um, but if it's not working at home, it's not working. Mm. Um, and if we're not careful um, to encourage our children <clears throat> and stop being critical with them. Um, they could learn actually to hate the church because um, they will begin to think you think more of the church and church folk than you do of them. So, uh -huh. Owen, yes, sir. We, we also have a habit of encouraging people as long as they're doing good. When they do bad, we don't. We <laughs> stop encouraging them. That's true, Pastor. That's true. And so encouragement doesn't mean they keep up the bad behavior, but we still need to validate them, affirm them, and encourage them to, to change, to be different. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So um, encouragement is significant because, as Leroy Scott says, that we, we all need encouragement. Um, so what about the days and times? that we live in these, these pandemic times um, where people have lost their jobs, people have, um, they've lost family members. Um, where does encouragement come in? Well, you know, during the pandemic, Said, said the strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. So those that are strong 
have to inter intercede in prayer, you know, because uh, we, we are the rock, you know, and uh, if we pray and continue to pray and continue to help those who are struggling, I believe that God would, you know, intercede. And let me ask another question. Thank you, um, Brother Scott. Okay. Let me ask another question. Um, what are some of the nonverbal ways in which we can um, encourage people? Smile. Smile? <laughs> in a football season, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What else? Well, you don't always have to say things. Uh, just being there with them in a time of need uh, is encouragement also. So you're talking about the power of presence? That's right. Okay. Thank you. And sometimes you could <laughs> say something to a person. Who is, who is stuck with a certain mindset and that will help change their thinking a little bit or see it in a, in a lighter in a lighter way. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Amen. This, this thing but, of... Go ahead. Well, kind of, yeah, one, I, and I guess that's one of, one of the real gifts of having, uh, you know, a spouse. Uh, my wife's a great encourager. She just sometimes, she'll just encourage the people just thinking of you. Yeah, no, no, no holiday, no sickness, just, just thinking of you. And it becomes very encouraging to people later down the road, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, like that letter, letter writing, sending a card. Mm -hmm. um, all these are forms of nonverbal um, encouragement. Um, ah. I guess I can go ahead and drop this one. Sometimes uh, you can just show up. Yeah, that's what Reggie said. Oh. Yeah. As soon as as soon as um one of our closest friends in life uh, knew that my wife had tested positive for COVID, um we got a we got a knock at the door, and there was a gentleman there with a bouquet of flowers for my wife, nice. and, and a card. And you know, I don't do a lot of running, but I ran right upstairs with it. I said, babe, look, look what we have here. What is that? Who sent that? I said, there's a card here. You got to read it. And so between the flowers, which was an ocular expression, and in the card, and what was written on there, it was um, it was a big sense of encouragement. You know, keep trusting God; He's got you. Everything's gonna be everything's gonna be all right. So, yeah, non nonverbal nonverbal. Um, forms of, of encouragement. How about a hug? Especially people in our family. I mean, we're not, we're not, I'm sure we're not social distancing it inside of our house. Um, unless you have a, a, unless you have a maverick living with you, it goes in, in, in and out of your house and whatnot. But people in our own homes, sometimes it's just a hug. You walk up, give somebody a hug. You don't know what they're going through or what they could be going through. And sometimes it's a hug that does it. And sometimes you will find out that they needed that hug because Hold on. when you hug when you hug them and they hug you, and it's a prolonged hug, it might end up in tears. So hugs can be a nonverbal form of encouragement. All right. 
Anybody else um, have anything they want to add? Um, I'm want to be mindful of the time. I was going to just add, um, I don't know whether anyone said this or not, but uh, you, know, you can encourage someone by just listening. Sometimes you can, mm. a friend of ours this weekend uh, mentioned that you can um, see what you need to see by listening. Um, and that's a way to uh, find out what someone's needs are by just listening to what they have to say. Mm -hmm. And then you might be able to better minister to them or encourage them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we close? Yeah, I agree with Sister Joe that uh, sometimes we should take time to listen to people and not talk over them. Um, and that'll, that'll give them, you know, space to share. And it shows them that, you know, we're taking our time to try to listen and try to help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Sometimes um, just a simple text, you know, like early in the morning, my friend Cassandra sometime would send me a, just a simple text saying, you know, good morning, I'm praying for you today. And, you know, it just seems to come at the right time or sometimes pastor would just send a text out of the blue, you know, um, and that goes a long way, that encouragement. Amen. I wanted to add that, um, this past week, and I shared this with Marosha. I wasn't going to share it, but I had a postcard made, an e-postcard that says, um, may I pray for you? Um, text yes. And God has been putting it on my heart to send it to various sisters. And one was, she's all the way on the West Coast, and I sent it to her. It was just Saturday. And she called me, and she was just going through so much, and we thought everything was okay. End up being an hour and a half call, but she said, I haven't been calling you because I thought you were so busy with your business. But um, I thank God because we prayed and I listened to her and she just needed someone to talk to because she, I mean, this, her life is upside down and I thank God for that. And I sent it to another sister whom um, we had, a, we fell out um, because of some issues and I, I was very nervous. I'm like, oh no, God, I can't send it to her. But I did. She didn't say yes, but she just sent the prayer hands, you know, that little emoji with the prayer hands. And I, I prayed for her. Um, so I, I continue to send it to you guys may get one to all my sisters and saying, hey, may I pray for you? Just text yes. Um, and that's it. But that, I think, is encouraging a lot of people. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, If the Lord says the same next week, when we reconvene, we're going to look at the New Testament um, definition of encouragement and the concept of encouragement. And I promise you, you will be blessed. Um, so I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend this interactive Bible study fuel for courage. I'm going to ask pastor if he would um, have his closing remarks and then he can delegate anybody he wants to, to, to pray us out. Okay. Uh, again, I, I just want to say God, I've enjoyed the uh, time together tonight. Thank for the Reverend Bowen for bringing this topic forward. And uh, I, I was just encouraged seeing Leroy on here. I mean, uh, Reverend, Reverend Minister Scott, Reverend Scott, uh, okay. just good seeing him on after what he's been through. And so um, I, I, I really yeah. appreciate uh, we, Sister Dottie. I miss hearing her on prayer line. And I know she's busy, but uh, we, we're, we're blessed to have people who care for one another. And so, Amen, amen. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Brother Reg if he closes us out to prayer. Thank you, sir. Let's bow for a moment. Our Father and our God, in the pure and perfect name of your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus the Christ, we bow to thank you for all that you have given us this evening. We thank you and we praise you, Holy Father, that you have blessed us to be able to come together to share in the word or in your word. We're just so thankful, Father, thank for you. how good you have been to us. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Holy Father, that Reverend Scott is back on board. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for raising him up, Holy Father. Yes. Yes, we just pray in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ 
that we yes. might be dedicated and devoted to your service, Holy Father, as, as we study you out of your most precious word. Bless us to draw closer in a relationship with you. Yes. We're just so thankful for all things. Thank you, Jesus. For yes. you are sovereign over all of creation. And we're just mm -hmm. so thankful, Father, that you Thank are our Lord. God. There is none else like you. Yes, Lord. So right now, Holy Father, we just pray that you were glorified in this, this study tonight. We thank you for all that you have given unto us. Yes. Bless uh, Reverend Bowen uh, as he prepares for his next weeks. Uh, bless us all as uh, uh, the storms are coming, uh, uh, um, the winds are blowing, uh, but we remain unmoved as we stand on the rock, which is Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're just so thankful. So you, be glorified, Lord, we pray. Yes. In the blessed name of the Lord Jesus, the one who is the Christ, Yes. We pray with all thanksgiving. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Good God. night, everyone. Good night. Good night. All. Sickness me.